Are you having a fun trip? This tarp system works quite well for the ability to position it exactly where you want it and uh, even able to tie a drawing line between the two front ones and uh, pretty much get all our clothes dry. They're still a bit damp because we were exhausted, but after that heavy rain, we, we got most things dry. And uh, from the loops on the inside, uh, you see these loops here, <coughs> loops you could do one on the inside protected from the rain as well so pretty cool setup Here's some remnants of the uh, past logging days in the uh, eras where they used the river to float all the logs down river to get to the ocean. This was a log slide. So they built this one big, big log there and then the other logs like that. And they chop them down and slide them in. Uh, into the river for their long journey float down to the Ottawa down the St. Lawrence packed on boats in the Atlantic or and uh, sent uh, back to England you see huge old like chains and stuff like that but often this type of thing they're breaking down and rotting and they're not you know there's not so many that are as intact as this one. Some uh, history there of, of that era. They came in and they cut down all those trees and you'd have the log drivers, the guys that would run along the, 
the logs and unplug log jams at the top of uh, at the top of dams and falls and a lot of them died doing that because it was super dangerous there'd be a big log jam and the guy's job was to run out on the logs on the river on top of a huge falls often and try to poke one free and then run away before they all just crash down the raging rapid and falls so um, quite the job but uh, yeah so a lot of them died doing that unfortunately but um, but yeah and everything was of course cut by a hand at that time as well just a buck saw and an axe so um, anyway it's nice to see the forest has rejuvenated since then because they did cut a lot uh, but this is a piece of history here of that era. Um, you know, now they use machines and they take it all out that way. They don't float it down river. But uh, this is what that was used for. Sliding the logs on in for their journey, long journey down. It's kind of cool. So this site, there's an old road here. It's actually here from, this was an old logging camp. Um, you know, so it's not sort of a modern thing. It's this wide and open with this much space here because there would have been workers stationed here, uh, working their buns off, camping here, and, um, you know, just driving logs. So it's kind of cool. They go burling down and down the white waters. That's why the log driver learns to step lightly. He's burling down and down the white waters. The log driver waltzes his girls completely. Others just getting the breakfast and the lunch out for the day. Exciting stuff. Just in the neck. The bacon package? What do you have there? The bacon wrapper? Beans. So the, the way we keep our gear dry on these trips, we use these uh, yellow Eureka bags, 115 liters, and um, they're waterproof, pretty hardy bags. And um, then inside we have a carpenter's garbage bag, um, really thick mill, strong garbage bag. So in the event something gets punctured in this bag that's a second line of defense and then our stuff sacks that we stuff our sleeping bags and clothes in are also typically waterproof so you have a triple waterproof system so if one rips there's the other one and so on and so forth and uh so what i do is i take this carpenter's bag like that and put everything in squeeze the air out as best as i can then i spin it Got a nice twist in there. 
Uh, the other good thing about this too is, is if you have any wet stuff you want to keep separate, you can kind of put it on top and keep your dry stuff in there. And so it works for that. Then I just use a piece of paracord and I wrap that around a couple times. There. Then this goes like this, pull it up, you squeeze the air, push it all out as best you can. And then this roll just rolls up like that. Tight, you wanna try to get at least three rolls, more the better. And then clip it down on the side here. There's a little clip and cinch it tight. And then same on this side. And then you have two more that come over the top. And um, we often strap stuff, extra stuff to it just for ease of portaging, like my tripod here. And uh, yeah, that clips like that. And um, that's how everything's waterproofed. And of course it's a good backpack too, so. Even if you don't tip in the river, there's lots of water coming over in the rapids and the bottom of your canoe is full of, full of water all the time. And even just with rain, it's full of water and all your clothes and gear and everything are sitting in there essentially in a big puddle for hours and hours and hours, day after day. It's also great because these bags, you can just like leave, you don't have to bring everything in your tent or out of the rain or anything like that. You can just like, grab what you need and just leave these out in the hammering rain. But just having something totally waterproof, submersible is, um, you know, it's it's good peace of mind, it's a good system. So if you ever need to patch it, it patches up really easily and it's good to go. So that's our system. <laughs> There's the old log slide. Go to shore. Go to shore. Good girl. Good girl, Della. You good girl? That would be a cool hike actually up to there. Awesome lookout up to that ridge.
pretty cool cliff here. You can hear an eagle somewhere up there calling out. Looks shallow, eh? On this, on the left. But we're supposed to run it left. There's probably boulders here. We're gonna get pushed to the right. I know. So, so we'll cut through that. Should I just do a lot of drawing? No. We'll just angle and we'll push. We'll just paddle hard forward and miss the waves. I think it says keep left for a reason. Okay, forward. Hard forward. Probably coming up to the other rapids. Just a little one. Good girl. Good girl. This is the most water here. Well, just approaching a big rapid here. It's at 800 meter class three, two. Starts as a class three boulder garden with a tight corner and ends as a class two with a very sharp turn. A lot of boulders. So this is uh, called Big Steel Rapids. It starts as a class three. I don't know if it's a class three because it's really bouldery, but it doesn't look that big, but it could be just the uh, intense boulders. I'm gonna just pop out here and scout it and uh, see if we can run this down. It looks from here like we can, which is pretty freaking sweet. Um, and uh, that'll, that'll set us ahead for sure get to the uh, scenic falls and maybe even do some swimming. I'm hearing some thunder, but hopefully that's passing the tail end of yesterday. I wouldn't call this a class three. I'd say the, uh, what I ran yesterday, the solo uh, was a class three. This, not so much. Canoe eater, because of the amount of dangerous boulders you could pin on, I would say was a class three, but uh, 
This in its current state is in a three. And assuming we don't get run into issues down at the uh, hard right corner, class two. Should be pretty smooth. Yeah, long class one. That was the class three, eh? Apparently, yeah. So class one, then the two hard rider pay. I feel like that was a two, but. Yeah, it was. Is this the class one? Yeah, this is the class one. It's a swift. Texas. I'm gonna go down and back ferry. There's gonna be a massive rock. I don't think you can miss it. Maybe. This might be our hard rider pay. Okay, it's back paddle. Back paddle. I'm trying. Back paddle. Yeah, I guess so. Huh. Not much, eh? Coming up, it just says Swift's continuous fun and games through gravel bar. We'll get to a big cliff and then scenic falls. You have your rain gear handy? Because it's going to pour soon. other channel actually had less water in it. I should have just kept going to the left where I was going. Mm -hmm. Just the water levels right now, that's where all the water's going. So shallow, eh? Anyway, it was fun though. Yeah, it was. Little bit like disappointing that it was so small. Well. Looks like we have another powerful thunderstorm coming. Well, unfortunately, Heather and I are just gearing up in our rain gear again. 
because it appears there's a powerful thunderstorm almost on us. Um, you can hear it in the distance. Not so distant. You can hear it in the not so distance. Sounds like it's getting closer actually. That sucks. Um, we're headed to some scenic falls now. After the amount of rain we had yesterday, once it cleared up today, we were like, all right. And now this is rolling in, so. Boo hoo, it's all part of the adventure. Character building. We're being blessed with some liquid sunshine. Oh, it's lightning right above it. Oh, we'll just stay close to shore. This thunderstorm has uh, really rolled in and uh, we're getting a little nervous. All of a sudden it went from no wind to just the trees blowing everywhere. It's raining and the sky's just blackened and uh, there's lightning. So we're kind of a little bit of sitting ducks out here. So we're trying to stay really close to shore. Not too much else we can do at the moment. But we're both a little nervous about it for obvious reasons. And uh, yeah, not, not the weather we had wanted for visiting the scenic falls. Little nuts actually. just flew off the thing there branch maybe it'll be around the corner I wonder if this system will bring in some cold weather for the days ahead I kind of have a feeling it will but um, just tail end of the hot weather just have some fun swifts to run here Took the uh, the mounts for the cameras off the canoe because they're metal. Well, one of them is a big, tall metal paddle, <laughs> and the other one's a aluminum mount. And I just felt like they were kind of like lightning rods, and um, it just didn't feel like the right thing to be doing <laughs> during a lightning storm. So. Looks like it might be clearing up right before the scenic falls. 
Uh, it's still raining, but there's a glimmer of hope in the distance, and I haven't heard the thunder in a while. Um, and the wind has died off, so morale is a little bit up. Well, the rain kind of went away for the most part for us to go up and check out this scenic falls. And uh, one thing that's probably helped with the rain is that the falls is probably pretty uh, much more spectacular because it, um, it's not a very big creek. So the more water, the cooler it probably is. Hey, 
I'm in a BC rainforest like it really resembles like Squamish or something like that with all the green moss and the ferns and the rain <laughs> so pretty Freaking awesome cliffs. Wow. Those are big. What are those? 350 foot cliff. Hey! Look! 350 foot cliffs behind us. Pretty freaking cool. That's probably why there was such an epic waterfall. You know, obviously, coming down there, but, um, yeah, it's a nice lake. It is late in the day. We spent some time at the falls. I wimped out and didn't swim. I totally wanted to swim, but I've just been soaked to the bone for two days straight. You know, running the rapids, A, you're soaked, standing in water, and then it just rained nonstop all day yesterday. And then right before we got here, it just hammered rain and I got a bit of a chill and like I could have done it, but I just, I wimped out. So that's why 
Um, I stood up there in my like raincoat, like a wimp. Um, anyway, but um, we got, you know, probably, I think one more class two that sort of catch Eddie or pay the price or die or something like that. And then we'll be in another lake and we're gonna paddle down to our campsite. Um, so probably about 5k to go and it is getting on. I mean, it's probably about 5.30, something like that. It feels later than that, but it's probably about what time it is, I would guess. Remnants of an old road here. Kinda cool. on this we were actually planning on getting a little bit further we were gonna go just run the next rapids and pick the next fight but we came across this one that uh, we didn't know was here and it's a beautiful freaking little site I mean you could fit a few tents that are plugged in around but this is obviously an esker um, and uh, like a sandy point and you know it's just really nice nestled in and so this is gonna be our home for the night just, a bay on this side and the river on the other, so really, really picturesque. Nicely done.